All right, gonna do a quick run through uh, for how to load, connect, and start a laze. Start a laze, start a laser. I was gonna say start a print. Um, so download your laser gerbil, laser gerbil software. You go to open file. I'm going to start a long live the queen burn that I am putting on a uh, honeybee frame and the instructions you get it kind of tells you what some of these mean I have not gone through and, and messed with each one individually yet uh, so this is the one two this is gonna be the fourth time I've tried this one this wood it burns really easily so I think I've got the settings dialed in this time, 300 uh, millimeters per minute. Um, and this is your power setting. So the two main variables that it seems like you change from burn to burn or engraving to engraving, speed and power or temperature. Um, so you can adjust one or the other, but you know, you, d you can dial in your settings depending on what you're trying to engrave on uh, will depend on whether you need to speed it down or speed it up, slow it down, or uh, adjust the power. So, uh, and here's the size, the width, and the height. So this is 100 millimeters by nine. <sighs> Gonna go to create. It kind of shows you. So one of the tricks, one of the things that I don't have figured out just yet is if you can adjust the positioning in the software. I don't think that you can. Um, if you have used it and know otherwise, please share. Anyway, so this is a preview. Um, next thing you want to do, you want to make sure your COM ports are set up so that when you plug in via USB, um, obviously your computer communicates to the laser. Where is my mouse? Got a cursor trail on there and everything. Still can't find it. So uh, that's connected. That's the file name. Um, it says select the highest baud rate possible. So that's why I did that, then hit connect. It is connected. Now one thing, um, well, I'll go into that later. So anyway, so now what you wanna do is once you've imported the buttons and just follow the instructions that you get with the laser, um, you select this. And it just shows where, where the laser turns it on. It lets you, um, adjust the beam, focus the beam, and whenever you're on this just laser test setting, ah, um, you, it, it's not uh, dangerous, it won't hurt your eyes, it's just kind of a, a positioning, dialing, dial, dialing it in um, setting, so what you want to do now is click this button, because what it's going to do is it's going to outline where the print is, or the, the print the engraving is going to take place um, and since I don't know how to adjust the positioning of this this is really important so let's do that so I'm a little off so I need to adjust that up just a little bit and then we will tell it to not exactly square but for the intents and purposes of this exercise it doesn't need to be okay so I've loaded the file I connected the um, software and the computer to the laser I have dialed in the positioning I have adjusted the focus and at this point you are ready to don your safety specs and hit play so This button right up here. Hit play. And there she goes. Okay, so this print is, this engraved is finishing up. I was gonna show you something that I made. So I, 3D printed these little uh, 
one millimeter step up, uh, oh, I don't know what you call them, little test strips so I can uh, do a power test on this thing to see how thick it'll get, uh, how, how thick of material it will burn through. So starts with one millimeter, works up to seven millimeters. Seven millimeters is roughly oh, a little over a quarter of an inch. So I don't think it'll cut all the way through this, but it'll be interesting to see. This is kind of a, a better test. This is uh, PLA 100% print density, so pretty thick plastic. And we just finished the long live the queen. So check this out. I thought I had the settings dialed in, but I definitely don't. Um, so what you see there. What I'm going to do, I'm going to redo it. I like the the color, but I don't like how it's kind of sooty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave everything the same except I'm going to speed up the uh, travel speed. And we'll see what difference that makes. So I'm going to redo this real quick. I'm just going to flip this frame over. Well, I've already screwed up that side. Hot dog. Ooh, I'm gonna try it right here on the top. All right. The worst thing about the laser is the free software, the laser gerbil. Man, it's it's bad um, and it's you know I'm I've never had laser software before so maybe it's part of the learning curve but I am very familiar with the um, software used for 3d modeling and printing you know slicing software and there, there's a lot of overlap in terms of just general understanding and laser gerbil is the worst software I've ever used uh, but it does do the job, it just takes a lot of trial and error. Uh, not very user friendly, but uh, everyone is using what's called the light burn, and it's, it's 30 or 40 bucks and you get two licenses with it. Um, I'm probably gonna download that, and I'm a cheapskate, so that's saying something. That's how badly I want good software, because the what you can do with this is, you know, sky's the limit, but the software is really the, the limiting factor here. So I was gonna show you some things I printed with it. This is the, that was the very first thing I printed. It's just a little oh, prototype logo I'm making. Um, it came out wonderfully. And then I decided I wanted to try a portrait. And so that's a old picture of Carly and I back in 2000, a long time ago. Um, I don't have the picture settings right. But even though I don't have that right, you can tell that you can see the detail in the uh, in the shadowing and stuff. So I'm, I'm confident that once I get it dialed in, it's going to be really good. I upgraded the firmware and tried to get on a bigger piece, and it still didn't uh, still didn't work right. So I'm still working through that. The problem is it takes a long time to do these, and so I just haven't had time to mess with it yet. I've been putting my attention on the. Uh, frame burning just to see what I can do with that and uh, yeah so I don't like the software the only other thing I don't like about it is that it has to be plugged into your computer to to use it I would love to be able to plug in a USB or SD card and select something and, and then leave it and let it do its thing um, because right now I, I'm tethered to this device uh, when there's other things I could be doing so if we can fix the software and if I'm sure there's a way I'm sure there's a way where I could do it without my computer and I just haven't got there yet but uh, if those two things were different it would be fantastic but still it works it does a good job and as soon as this prints done we'll do the power test all right so turned out pretty good like I said, could have been a little faster, maybe a little less power, but that was way better than what it 
look like before. So once you know your material, you know the machine, getting the print speeds and the power settings right probably won't be a big deal. So that'll be cool to have that printed on all of our uh, frames. All right, now we're going to do the power test. All right, so here we go. Safety glasses on, power. Instant flames. Oh, it smells bad. It smells real bad. It doesn't look like it's going through. We'll see. No way. Definitely didn't go through. Well, actually, now it's hitting the wood. It's going for another run? Good lord, it's had enough. Okay, so it got through three millimeters of PLA. I don't know if this was the best material to test on because it's it's just weird. It started to melt and degrade as, as the print went on, so it may not be the best test, but I do know that it did get through three millimeters and it started to pop through the fourth millimeter. Looking at it this way, you could tell it got about halfway through. Um, but one thing to keep in mind is the focal length you know, down here is different than it is up here. So probably not the best test for this. Um, but either way, you could probably cut through three mil. Oh no, not the peeps, not the peeps. Oh my God, it's coming. is bubbling bubbling oh, that smells good mmm oh yeah that was painful I don't know if that feels like but I won't find out I see the light going through his head that's bizarre well it uh, won't cut through a peak too thick I mean, if, I bet if I made a bunch of passes and adjusted the uh, the focus on it, it probably would, but this was more out of general curiosity. All right, so that's pretty much it. It, uh, it does work pretty well. I'm still going through the motions, figuring out how to do the settings, um, but it obviously can create some really high quality prints, some really high quality engraves engravings lasers la lasers they can do good stuff when used properly so um, when I get the new light burn software I'll run through and I'll do like a pro versus cons and I'll probably do a video of a laser versus a branding iron um, kind of ways out way out the pros and cons of each of each way to do that um, I think this is okay to eat my mouth is watering. It's for science. <laughs>